Good morning, viewers. You are welcome to another day, and you are welcome into God's presence. Uh, wherever you are at this moment, I advise you to gather your family together as we consider today's devotion in our daily vaunting produced by the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. And as you listen to what God has for you today, I'm sure your life will not remain the same. Uh, today being seventh day of July in the year 2017, uh, we have the message of God. I mean, as we look at the message, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We pray as we look into your word, you will speak to our situation. You will bless our lives and there shall be testimony. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. By the grace of God, our topic today is Isaiah, Isaac had time for God. Isaac had time for God. The text is Genesis chapter 24, verse 61 to 67. We shall read the passage together. Then Rebecca and her maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac had come from Bia Lehi, Roy, for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebekah also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant has answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah, and he married Rebekah. So she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was confronted, was comforted after his mother's death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the devotion when the ghost does. Isaac was a godly man who devoted quality time to meditation and prayer to God. He obviously had a habit of separating himself from the noisome neighborhood onto a quiet and conducive atmosphere to aid his meditation. Isaac was clearly aware that his father's chief servant had undertaken a mission to secure a wife for him. Yet, being equally mindful of the wisdom that relies on the arm of flesh will ultimately spell disaster, he probably included the servant's trip in his prayers. Isaac lifted up his eyes in the place of meditation and saw Rebecca. Revelations are most likely encountered in an atmosphere of meditation. Upon setting their eyes on each other, their eyes were immediately knit together, an indication that she must be God's answer to the prayers of his family. And Isaac knew Rebecca was in the scheme of God's will for his life, and she will now be his confidant and companion. With his mother gone, this was great comfort to him. Define comfort awaits you on your prayer closet. Now today we are considering Isaac had time for God. In our previous uh, study, we learned that Isaac was the child of promise from God. And Isaac was born of Abraham and Sarah. Isaac, the name means laughter. Eventually, Isaac married Rebekah, who bore him to his son, Esau and Jacob. And he was a man who devoted his quality time to meditation and prayer to God, and God prospered his ways. Isaac, by the grace of God, went out one evening into the field to meditate. And as he went, in the process of meditation, meditation he discovered God's will for his life. 
he was very mindful of the danger of relying on the arm of flesh, which could ultimately lead to disaster. And if we remember the words of scripture in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5, the cause is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Now the implication of this for us is that those whose trust centers in themselves and in human resources are destined for disappointment. They are destined for spiritual poverty and they are destined for ultimate loss. So on the contrary, those who fully trust in the Lord will be blessed by God and ultimately they will be rewarded with godly inheritance. They will not be afraid of life circumstances because their rules go down deep into God because they trust in the Lord God Almighty and so they will not be afraid of whatever happens. And because they have devoted their time for God, God will always be by their side. God will always lead them and God will always be their guidance. Now, another implication for us that we need to know is that there is a call to worship God wholeheartedly. There is a call to separate from ungodly influences around us and devote our time fully to God. As believers, we should also note that we must be in the spirit of meditation. As believers, we must know that we must be in the spirit of prayer. It was that prayer that has helped Isaac and has made his way prosper. That prayer had helped him in his meditation and he had God. He discovered God's will for his life. And as Christians, we must also form this habit on daily basis to devote our time for God, to hear God, and to hear what God will minister to our lives, to our situations, and that will help us and will do us good. In Psalm 55 verse 17, the Bible says, Evening, morning, and noon will I cry out to God, and he hears my voice. Praying morning, praying at noon, praying at all times, and praying at night is certainly an excellent way to maintain correct priorities throughout the day and at all times. We must also note that the prayer of God's people are effective against any overwhelming situation or any overwhelming evil in the world. And so, dear people of God, today's topic has challenged us into action, into devoting our time to serving God, devoting our time to worship God, devoting our time to look unto God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I pray at this moment, as we devote our time to worship God, as we devote our time to look unto God, we will not serve God in vain. And as we devote our time to focus our attention unto God, God will minister to us. God will attend to our needs, and God will give us victory in our situations. Let us pray. The prayer in the Daily Fountain says, Gracious Lord, teach me to endeavor to spend quality time in your presence every day, so I may be aligned with your purpose for me. Amen. Father, we thank you. We pray, Lord, as we look unto you, you will give us grace. And as we devote our time unto you, we will not be disappointed. We thank you, Father in heaven, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Once again, we invite you to join us same time tomorrow for another blessing from the Lord. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.